All right, let's talk about Jared Goff getting rave reviews and OTAs. They ain't put the pads on yet, but first we're talking about Hawkinson love for um, TJ Hawkinson tight end, start tight end for the Lions, love for Jared Goff. Make sure you check out Detroit Lions Talk playlist. Hit that subscribe button, bell icon button, share the video. And he went on to say that uh, he's hungry, Hawkinson said. He's a guy who really cares about the, his, this, his players. He wants to connect with them. Hawkinson said, I think that's really cool just to be able to have that connection outside of football, just to be able to hang out with him, be friends. That's a cool situation that we have. We have been that's he's gotten that locker room. So, um, the biggest question is, um, the biggest question is honestly, uh, can he be a leader? You know, can he play up to the level? But he says having had such a uh, strong season last year, Hawkinson was eager to get. To work this offseason working with new tight end coach Ben Johnson. He's found several areas to improve. Johnson just showed me a little tad tip. Ben Hawkinson said, you know, like, hey, this release looks good. You can do this. Or, hey, this route looks good. You can do this. Just different things he thinks I can implement in my game. Speaking with the media last week, Johnson said that, that he and his staff have found three or five areas that, where they can believe Hawkinson can improve. I'm thankful for that, Hawkinson said, for someone that's always pushing me. One the way that Hawkinson has learned learned by watching tape of legend Calvin Johnson. He quoted on Calvin Johnson had one of the best catch points you ever see. Hawkinson said just going up for the ball and coming down with it and seeing how to use his body, seeing how he used it against defenders, just how he used his hands. That dude was one of a kind. Um, strong OTA uh, attendance. Let's kind of get some bonus stuff. Despite many teams having spotty attendance OTAs, Lions have had almost perfect attendance around 80 players are practicing according to the roster release. Hawkinson and head coach Dan Campbell, uh, this is a sign of strong union that the team has. Quote, we had talked about all of this, and so the best I can tell you is players went, want to be here, Campbell said, and we're having four weeks of this. We're basically having three weeks, two weeks of OTAs, and next week will be the Vets mini camp. And th that last week, the focus will be on young players. Players didn't ask for any of that. I think, quote, I think it's cool. Hawks just said, it's the offseason, so we're all trying to get better along, as long as you're able to uh, help the team. When we come to, to the fall, that's our goal. Every position, every player, I think it's a cool thing to have everybody here. Uh, more than that, here are, are the general feelings of excitement throughout the locker room. Most of that has to do with the the realization that everyone is playing the same game they've played since they were very young. Guys are excited to go to practice. Hawkins said, guys are excited to be here. We're having fun. I think the biggest misconception, the biggest thing that the league offers is that we get to play a kids game for a living, and that's the, the thing of something very unique, excuse me. So, I mean, yeah, that's cool, bro. I mean, it's good to see guys' morale is up because, when, you know, y'all boy was here, Matt Patricia. Y'all was really riding with, and I told y'all the truth about them. Wasn't no fun. Nobody want to come to work and they ain't fun. Nobody want to come to work. You can't socialize. I had a job back in the day when I was younger. They want you to sit at your station, just not talk, not do nothing, and just do shit. You know, that's just what I mean. And, um, yeah, that's just what I mean, man. That's, and that's how corporate America wants you, want you to come to work. They want you to be sad. They want you to be mad. I guess they think that... Excuse me, I think they, they think that's going to make you focus, but it's not. You know, people sometimes want to look to go on to work, look to seeing their co-workers. They want to be able to form that bond. You know, and it seems like corporate America don't want you to be miserable. You know, don't want you to have any ambitions. You know, that's the thing, man. I don't understand why I got to be like that, man, but... um. They said Jerry Goff, first impression as a new leader of Detroit Lions Hall has been a good one. The way Goff has operated this season in the first week of uh, offseason OTA's workout showed that he's been preparing to handle responsibilities that go with being starting quarterback. Head coach Dan Campbell stressed that it was only the first two practices, but he was very he was clearly impressed with Goff's performance. It's been big, Campbell said Thursday, with support start of the third workout of the OTA program. Quote, anytime you can get your quarterback here all around all your guys, the offensive line, the receivers, the running backs, the tight ends, and let let him work the system. Not only get used to the system itself, but he's going to run 
a system for these players around him to get used to it. It's been huge. Look, then again, we're only in week one into it. I can tell you this. He throws a pretty ball, that's for sure. This is the season of massive change for the Lions golfers in the central figure in it. You know, so that's that's cool, bro. Got some pictures. You know. He went on, he had been a part of the system in LA. Back in LA, Campbell said he had those those come out. They already begun to implicate a little bit. It wasn't hundred percent starting. We're scratching OTAs. Quote, that on top that on top of the fact we've been doing zooms. Those zooms it helps at least gives you a starting point into the first week. You're not coming into having to stop and literally teach just every small thing and go as slow as possible. Quote, you can tell that they had some idea walking in of what it needed to and look like or what we were calling things. That's credit to him and those guys that were willing to go out there and work with him on their own time. That says a lot about the guys we have on this team. So apparently the culture is starting to change. It's not going to change right away, you know. Um, but obviously, they don't, they're not going to get everything Dan Campbell does on the, is doing on the tee. They're not going to be able to come in there and after two, three years, they'll be like, oh, this is what Dan won't. There's these other players that don't, that come in. But it's going to take some time, bro. And literally, he's thinking the price of Jared Goff, but by week 16, they could be talking about another quarterback. You know, by week 10, they could be talking about, you know, signing him to another contract. So, literally, you have to wait and see, man. And, um, you know, it's week one, week two. Obviously, they've been in those Zoom calls. And, you know, Jerry Goff's ability to retain information and move on and not let the, the, the last bad play, a good play, get too high, too low, is going to be huge. You know, the biggest thing I was missing in Stafford, just with him, was leadership. You know, Jerry Goff is able to connect with players and be a leader and get them to do things, you know, that he wants them to do and they need to do. That's going to go a long way because we didn't have a leader. It was Calvin, Dominic, too, Matt Stafford. You know, we didn't have that leader, and, and you know, you know, it's not over if Jared Goff isn't that guy, you know, on the field or off the field or both. You know, you got a good quarterback class coming in next year, and I think that was one of the reasons you didn't take Justin Fields. You took Penny Soil because next year, Spencer Riley, Emory Jones, uh, Sam Howell, Spencer, I tell you, we got a lot of quarterbacks coming in. And then some of those guys are not going to be up there next year, but then you're going to see some dudes come out of nowhere like Robert Griffin III. So, you know, it's good to hear that, um, it's good to hear that Jerry Goff is getting the praises. That's good to hear. And that's what you want to hear. But, yeah, that's good. We see what Jerry Goff is able to do, man, if he can come in and do some things that Stafford didn't do as far as leadership. But number one thing is he got to come in and play. You know, Detroit really needs a superstar, you know, talent at quarterback. And maybe, you know, Sean McVay offense really, you know, you know, didn't evolve. And, you know, it did get the most out of uh, – and then get the most out of Jared Goff. And maybe Anthony Lynn can custom make offense for Jared Goff um, where he can be more successful in the offense. But, you know, it's going to be interesting, man. If he can, you know, it's going to be interesting because it seems like he's starting off to be a good leader, earn the trust of those guys, get comfortable with those guys. And it's like meeting somebody new or working with somebody new. You can't, you can't really lead them unless you know them. You can't cuss them out or you can't, you know, have those tough conversations with them. Let you form some type of rapport with him. So, you know, honestly, it's going to be very interesting to see, you know, how, you know, how he, how he works, how he works in the leadership department, how quick the line come together. You know, how him and Anthony Lynn, you know, on game day, you know, after the first 10 or 20 scripted plays, you know, wasn't to us play 21, was play 50. It's going to be interesting to work Jerry Goff. You know, really, with Jerry Goff, you got to build the offense around him. With Sean McVay, they built it around they run around Ty Gurley. When Ty Gurley went down, they struggled. So now it's time to get uh, see if Jerry Goff can be comfortable without the play action. And can he make those proper plays, man? And that's that's really gonna be the million dollar question. And if he ain't comfortable, you know, if he's not that guy, you know, without play action, gonna be looking for a new quarterback next year. But hey, let me know what you guys think. Don't forget me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Reach out if you have a business question, require response, your video request. All my social media is in the description. Uh, if you want to advertise your business on the channel, video request, chop it up, hit me up, Twitter, Fast Wedding, and so on. If you want to make a financial donation, Cash App, CJ Good 313, that's in the description. PayPal link there as well, too. Best way to donate, share, share the video. But check out Detroit Lines Talk playlist. Let me know what you guys think about the video one time for one time. Peace.
All right, all my Detroit Piston fans and all my Detroit fans, all my Motor City Sports Talk fans, make sure you guys go check out Piston Mike. We got him over 100 followers, so make sure you check him out. Everything Pistons, man, he going to hold it down and do his thing just strictly on the Pistons thing. You know, I got the lines of Pistons, but, man, we always trying to help people get their channel up. Let's get him to 200 next, 300 next, 400 next, 500 next, and let's get him all the way to a rack so he can start making that bag. Appreciate you guys. Make sure you go over to Piston Mike as you see it on the screen. Let's get him to 200, then 300, then 400, then 500, and the whole shebang. Peace.